Hey guys, it's July 2nd, 2021. I'm Kimberly Jolly from Fat Quarter Shop and we're wrapping up Socialites. I have lots of stuff to show you today. The first thing I'm gonna start off with is showing you how I make labels. I'm also going to show you a sneak peek of our Liberty Box. I'm also gonna show you lots of stuff that I've been sewing along with and we got lots of new fabric this week that I'm gonna show you and a lot of it is all the things that you guys have been waiting on. So that's super exciting. So first I wanted to show you my Socialites quilt. That's the three inch size. And thank you to Teresa who pieced it together for me since I was out of town. Now this is the three inch size and this is the one I'm going to keep. The nine inch and six inch size are gonna be auctioned off on July 15th and we'll talk more about it in the live streams. It will be on eBay and all the money will go directly to Make-A-Wish. So this quilt finishes at 27 and a half inches. So I'm gonna show you how I attach a label to the back. Now first, I wanted to talk about this is just one piece of fabric because I don't need to put any seams together. I just need my backing to be about 10 inches bigger than my front. But if you're doing, so if you look at it, it is about 10 inches to the side and then 10 inches this way. So I've already cut it down, I've already ironed it, and I have starched it. But if you're doing the six inch or the nine inch size and you need to sew a seam, refer to the beginning quilt series on Fat Quarter Shop's YouTube channel and I show you how you do a seam for the back. Now I will tell you what you're supposed to do is sew a half inch seam and press open. I always do a quarter inch seam and press to one side because I didn't know that that was what you were technically supposed to do and so that's what I do. So I'm gonna put the quilt out of the way and what I am going to do is something that I like to do when I send my quilts to Gina. So I roll them up. So if you roll it up, you're less likely to get seams. And she, I'm not gonna mail it because she's gonna pick it up. So if I roll it, when she gets it, it's easy and you can put it in a trash bag easily just so it doesn't get dirty or anything. So I've rolled it up. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put a label. There's two different ways you can do a pieced back. Now, sometimes I don't do this, but most of the time I do. So two things you can do. The first thing you can do is you can piece a label, which I'm going to show you how to do. Then you could piece two pieces to the side and a piece here and a piece here, and it will be pieced in. But since this is already just one piece, I don't wanna have to mess with doing that. So I'm gonna do a label and put it on top. But when I piece the label, either way, you can either piece it in here or you can sew it on top and it just kind of depends what the fabric is, how much fabric I have left over. If I don't have a lot of fabric left over, I'll use scraps from the front to go across. But today I'm just gonna do a label and put it on top. Now, I am going to be showing labels from Sweetwater Label Company. I'm in their monthly subscription and I'm actually almost out of all of the labels. So this is one that I got a couple years ago, so we'll zoom into it. And on the back, it has a stickiness to it. See that little shine? So it will stick. So you can either piece with it like that or piece it down on a white piece of fabric, which is what I like to do. So I just put that on this white piece of fabric and I'm gonna press this down. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Oops. So you just press it down for about 10 seconds and so now it's stuck down it's not going to come off once it's down that means that there's no sticky on the back and if and i did put this on the wrong side just so that the white dots wouldn't show to the front and you could make your own labels um you could you could custom make some and put them on spoon flour there's a lots of things you can do i'm not very design oriented so for me it's just great to be in the club and I've been in it for years. I'm almost out of all of them though. Now, my preference is I don't want this little black line to show on my label. I just don't want that to show. So what I'm gonna do is put a quarter inch line of my Creative Grids ruler on that line 
and go to the left a tiny bit because then it's going to be in my quarter inch seam. I'm going to do the same thing all the way around. So I line up the top and it's right on that quarter inch line. I'm going to go to the left. That way you're not going to see it because it's going to go, it's going to be shorter than the quarter inch. And I do try to make this pretty square. Not square, but I do, do try to get it pretty nice and um, straight. And the labels come in all kinds of sizes. This was probably part of a bigger label at one point. And I probably cut the top and the bottom off. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm randomly gonna cut, add some sides and top and bottom and we're gonna put this on our quilt using this hot ruler, which I love. I can't say enough about this product. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm randomly gonna cut some strips. So I'll cut a straight strip. I'll probably cut inch and a half. I'm just gonna, and this is just left over from the front. So that's what I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna put the right sides up. And what I will do is, I think I'm gonna add to the top and bottom first. So I'm literally going to just put this right sides together and stitch. I'm not gonna trim it until later. So I just put it right on my machine, quarter inch foot, start stitching off the edge, go all the way across. And then you can't see that dotted line. Trim that off, add it to the other side. So on this, there's no math. It's just, I'm just trying to make a little border for it. So I have something to flip down and you'll see that in a second. So from here, I'm going to press these real quick off the, I'm gonna just leave the um, iron off of the screen today. It's just easier. And then here you can see it kind of chopped off the bottom of my last name and that's okay. So here, just trim it flush with the edge of your label and then I'm gonna iron this down again since that is messy. And I am using starch. Now from here, I'll probably just cut this in half. I probably only need two of these. And I'm gonna do these the same thing. I'm just gonna flip it over and put it on. And what I like about this is when I send this to my quilter, it gets quilted into the quilt so nobody can ever take it off. And I actually got this idea from Julie Herman years and years and years ago because she's the first person I saw doing it. I didn't do it for a long time, but I started doing it once I had access to the Sweetwater Label Club. Okay. So now I am going to move this here. So I'm just going to press it down like I always do and press to one side. Now on this, because the center is thick, because it's two layers, you're going to see this is kind of bumpy. It's not as flat as it normally would be, but nobody's going to know but you. So from here, I'm going to trim this. I'm gonna trim all four sides so that it stays square. So I'll start on one, turn, line up my ruler at the top and the right, and just get it, it doesn't have to be exact, but anything that's kind of off a little bit 
or not ex see how that's kind of wavy I'm gonna get that straighter that drives me crazy could do is you could just put this on your back I would not do this though you could put this on your back and zigzag it I don't want to do that I want to have a have these ed the raw edges turned under so that they won't fray when I wash it eventually so what I will do I don't use so this is um, this was developed by Lazy Girl Designs years and years ago in collaboration with Clover, and I saw her demo it years and years ago at Quilt Market. And it's basically a ruler that you can iron on. It's um, strong, I don't know what it's made out of, but here, I don't use these lines. I don't know why, I just don't. I just put this on here. Actually, I'm gonna do the long sides first. I just put it on there and I'm like, oh, I don't know, about a quarter inch, maybe a little bit more. And I literally turn it under, turn it over, and iron. And you iron just right on this ruler. And you just let your iron really sit there. And look how pretty that is. Now, there's no way I could have done that without this ruler. So I love this ruler. Um, and I'm gonna go, I'm actually gonna do the two long sides first. And I usually just line up this side and then I just kind of wing it. I don't, I don't do it exact. I do it where when I pull over, it's enough. If it's too skinny, like if it's too skimpy, that if I do that much, it's gonna flip up. So after you do it a couple times, you'll kind of, you'll kind of know the amount that works good. But it's good to let it really, really, really sit there. And then I usually do two opposing sides. I usually do the longest first. Then I'm gonna do these two. And I guess I have found that that works better for my corners rather than going in a circle. So this is just trial and error. Now on this one, I will do a little bit more because you have more bulk to get to sit flat. And if you just move your iron from the right to the left and just let it sit there, it's gonna get it nice and flat. And do the same thing over here and again on these sides I do more of a fabric I'm not worried about it being a, the border being exactly you know exactly the same diameter all the way around the border that doesn't matter to me so from here I'm gonna just press it flat And you can see this kind of dips up a little bit. So what you can do is take this little glue, any kind of glue you have, put it right there, get a pin, pull this little part that's sticking out back, push that down and let it sit and then you can iron it down and then the front will be flush with the back. Do we have stitch witchery? I just thought about that. So from here I'm going to do the same thing on the corners. See, that makes the front so if you don't do that what you can do is as you're sewing you can push this back with your with your needle but if you get the back and these two don't look bad but I'm gonna go ahead and and get those kind of out of the way so when I put this down it's I don't have to worry about the corners popping out and this glue is something new that I've been using and I really like it um, I'm almost out. I've been using a couple, like a month or so, and I'm, I haven't even used the full bottle yet. So, 
So now that's ready to put on my quilt back. And the way that I'm gonna attach it is with the stitch witchery. Now you can see this hot mess. This is what happens with Stitch Witchery. So Stitch Witchery was introduced to me by Barb and Mary of Me and My Sister Designs. I had no idea what they were talking about. They were like, oh, go get Stitch Witchery. I'm like, what? So what this is, is it's double-sided. It's fusible. So if it gets near the iron, it's gonna go psh, 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 psh. You have to be really careful, and it's gonna stick up your iron too. So what I'm going to do is and this is what I put the little, I put this in there to keep it all in place, which you can see how well that works. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So there is, um, there's a couple different sizes of this. We carry two of the sizes. So I'm gonna just go with the skinny size and I'm gonna cut two that kind of go the, the length and then two that go the width and you just have to keep it away from your iron. And then I'm gonna put, I'm gonna have a little piece that goes in the center and you'll see how it works. And this stuff lasts forever. Like this would last me like five years. But this is great if your daughter or son needs their pants hemmed or anything, you just pop this in and iron it down. In case, like especially, I take these with me on dance convention in case somebody's costume comes apart because there's always an iron in the room. And then it, it should stay, but it, it does wiggle every now and then. So I'm gonna move this out of the way, making sure that my iron does not touch those little stitch witcheries. Now what you could do is you can just pin it down. You don't have to have the stitch witchery to do this. I'm just showing you kind of what I do, but I'm gonna move my iron out of the way first. And then we're gonna do like a big, big camera view. And my goal is to take this piece It's square and I can do lots of things so it's as far out as it'll go let's see I can either put this I'm gonna move the little stitch witcheries out of my way you can either put this like on the bottom right and if you've got 10 inches here and 10 inches there So I'm gonna, you can either do that or you can put it in the center. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to put it in the center. So first I'm gonna just find the center and I'll just do a little crease. And I think it's easier for my quilter. Okay, well now I don't see the crease. Oh, there's the crease. So it's, I think it's easier for my quilter when I do it in the center. So I'm gonna move my iron back. This is gonna be a little bit hard to do with. Okay, so I'm gonna kinda move this. Okay, so this is the edge of my ironing board. So I need this. I'm gonna kinda keep this out of the way by just rolling it. I'm gonna put my label kind of right here. It doesn't have to be perfectly center. Um, and it depends where you wanna put it. So what I will do is put this just right here. Now, the one thing that bugs me about this is I can see the back through the front. But is that worth it for me to have to buy extra to add more and do that whole seam? No, especially on a quilt this small. But if that bugs you, what you would do at this point is you would have skipped the section of adding the hot hammer and rolling it down and just sewed it in. So from here, I'm gonna try to get all my stitch witchery on here first. Let's see. And I'm gonna do one side at a time. Okay, the biggest thing on the stitch witchery is you do not want that stitch witchery to touch your iron. So right there, there's a little piece sticking out. You just fold it under and put your iron down. And I usually go side by side. I'll just go in uh, all four corners kind of thing. My hair is in there, that's gross. But yes, I have found that once your iron hits this, it's gonna make your iron black because it's basically fusible. 
and you just want your iron to be hot enough for it to really set and for you to really set it on there for about 10 seconds because if you don't it is going to come off so then i'll do this side And then here, I'm gonna just kind of push this up. And I didn't need that center part, so I'm just gonna leave that part off. Make sure it's nice and hot. Okay, now I'm gonna move the ironing table off of here just to get that out of the way. And then I'm gonna show you, it's kind of in the center, so. And this quilt has a directional print because it's got a directional name and then on the front of the quilt it's that sewing machine that should be up and down. So when I send this to my quilter, I'm gonna put a little sticky note right here. This is what I do. Top left and then let me see my quilt real quick. I literally put this on there, top left. find the top of this so this is here so I want that to be my top this to be my top left over here and that way there's no question about what side goes up that's my horrible handwriting um, now honestly like sending this to Gina I don't really have to do this but I'm just doing I mean but then I'll roll it back up but I'm still not done So you can leave this just like this. It's not going to come up. They're going to quilt it, blah, blah, blah. But I prefer to stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this open toe foot so that I can just go right along the edge and stitch. And I'm going to use white thread because color 2000 will pop out on this and look ugly. So I'm going to stitch all the way around. At the beginning, I'm not going to back stitch, but then when I get to the end, I'm going to go back over my stitches and I'm going to use a pretty wide stitch and we're going to stitch it down. Sorry, we're trying to move the sewing machine got stuck on the mat. Okay, so I'll move the little footy foot thanks okay now here I'm gonna roll this up out of my way which is kind of what I do with cross stitch I don't like it to get in the way so I'm gonna pull it over here I'll just pick one corner to start in actually I like to start on the bottom So I put white thread, let's see what color it is, 2021. And I'm just gonna, let's see, I'm gonna put it on a 3.0 stitch length. And just stitch. I'm stitching right next to the edge. Now you can see because I glued it down, my corners aren't popping out, so I don't have to worry about that. And I just rotate. Now, when you're working with a big piece of fabric, like I'm showing you a small, you have to make sure that this doesn't accidentally go under your label. Don't ask me how I know. Because I have done that before. So just keep going. Making sure it stays nice and flat. And then I'm gonna cut, I have this little piece of thread right here from the beginning. I'm gonna cut that before I go back over because I don't want it to get loose. I don't wanna sew over it so it looks ugly. So I'm just gonna stitch. 
When I get to my previous stitches, I'm going to go over a little bit. Maybe backstitch once, clip it off, and then we'll take a look at it from the top camera and we'll just zoom really close in to it. So you can see I did a wider stitch. I tried to get as close to the edge as possible and that stitch witchery kept it in place. Now, if you don't have stitch witchery, all you have to do is pin it down and it is, it is actually straight. Um, some of the labels that I get come with the year. Some of the labels just have my name. Kind of just depends. So then what I'll do is when I fold it up, I'll fold it where this is not folded on top of. I'll probably just fold it where that's kind of just hidden. And then like this, and then when the quilter gets it, she's gonna see my label. And she'll know exactly, um, you know, she'll see the label and she'll know where to put it. So I hope that you guys really liked that label um, tutorial. This is, um, sometimes I sew it in, like I said, I do it different each time. Um, and now I'm going to answer any questions. So if you have any questions, go ahead and sub submit them. Um, is there a reason you don't backstitch anytime you start a block and stop? So if you're doing quilt block, it will provide bulk and you really don't need to backstitch. The only time I backstitch when I quilt is when I add borders. And you're actually, I don't think you're supposed to, that's just what I do. What is my favorite white with the dot? 20708-36. We'll be back in stock in August or later this month. Is stitch witchery just like seam a seam a quarter inch? It probably is. I don't know what seam a seam quarter inch is, but it's basically just fusible on both sides and it's super thin, so it's not thick. Like when you touch it, you're not going to feel it. Um, Cheryl says, good morning from Australia. Can you use Wonder Fuse instead of stitch witchery? I've never used it. So when I, I don't know much about fusible, so I'm gonna just say, I guess to cover all the questions like that, you can use anything that works for you. I just, that's the only thing that I know to use. That's the only thing I own that's fusible like that. And I only know it because me and my sister showed me. So all the questions coming in that say, can you use this or this? I would say, try it and see. I've never tried anything else. So I don't wanna say yes or no, cause I might give you the wrong answer. Could you use the glue to attach the stitch witchery to the fabric first and then attach to the fabric? I would not put glue and stitch witchery together. That's gonna give you too much thickness. Now, if you didn't have stitch witchery, could you glue it down? Yes, but I don't think it's gonna stay in place as strong as stitch witchery. So the glue will work, but for a piece this big, I'm not sure I would wanna try that. It might move. Um, you could also just sew a second layer of white fabric on the underside. You could, I think that would be a little thick and a little um, too much work. I always thought it was a little harder for the quilter to have to center the label. Um, yeah, I would just ask your quilter what you think. I prefer the look of it being in the center because I feel like if I put it in the bottom right, they're gonna have to make it centered this way and this way. So I just put it wherever I think looks best. I don't think my quilter minds, but you can always just kind of ask. Um, what is on the ironing board? So we bought something off Amazon to kind of try, but we're kind of looking into getting something better for the set. So we will get back to you on that. The precision glue will be back in stock late July. They are having problems with supply. Why not use the glue for the corner to adhere the backing? Um, I think if you use the glue all the way around, like these four sides, I feel like it might shift. So the stitch witchery is just what I use. Um, but on this, I encourage you to use whatever you think will work and try it out. This took me a, a while to figure out exactly how to perfect this. So anything, I always encourage you to try anything you have at home. I bet a tape dispenser would keep it from beginning a hot mess like that. Just a suggestion. Oh, I think it would unroll on a tapes dispenser. Um, are the Sweetwater labels washer safe? Well, I hope so, because I've been using them for years and they're on all my quilts. What is the adhesive stitch witchery? 
Um, thank you for the tip. The corners are annoying. Thank you. I have someone from Ireland watching, which is awesome. Uh, the, the, um, okay, so two questions are coming in on the starch. So stay flow. I have tried it. It is not my preference. So I don't use stay flow. Gina Tell was so nice and bought me some, and I tried it, and I was like, not from Kimberly. Two new kinds came in. We're going to show you later in the show from Faultless. Those will both be tried by me tonight. Um, I've been out of town, just got back in town yesterday, so I'm going to try them and give you a review next week. Can I do the Sweetwater labels with Minky? Yes, I have done that. And I can try to find a quilt where I have that on there, but yes, I have. Do I starch lay her cakes? Yeah, but only if you, I always starch everything. I will never make a quilt if I can't starch. So if I need that full 10 inches, I'll buy a bigger cut, like a fat eighth. <clears throat> Why not just stitch the label down without extra fabric around it? Because you, I don't want that raw edge. It will fray. Plus, if you try to fold that back without that border fabric, I've tried, that glue on the back of this label is going to get all over your iron. So um, I tried that and it didn't work out for me. Um, good afternoon from Sweden. Um, hi, Christopher Thompson. Are you going to get white on white small float snowflake fabric? We have some. If you look on Kimberville Basics, white on, just search Kimberbell Basics. There are several white on whites with snowflakes that she has. Can you do a demo on how to square up your quilt so you know your sides are straight and that your borders will go on correctly? So I've done uh, lots of tips of, on that in my beginner series, but I don't square up my quilts. I measure my borders before I put them on. And next Monday in my video on socialites, I will be showing you how I do that and um, I don't square up my quilts. Um, am I going to Garden of Quilts in September? I am if my daughter's dance schedule does not conflict, but my daughter's dance schedule has not come out yet. Is there enough fabric to starch in the designer mystery? Yes, absolutely. Will I be doing two by three and a half inch flying geese paper? Yes, we will add that to the list. For the Sweetie Pie Jolly Bar, since I can't starch the Jolly Bar, should I not starch the background? Correct. You either starch all or none. What is the biggest length of fabric I starch? So you will see next Monday when I do the video, I cut down what I needed for the length, but I cut down, I didn't do the whole 44 inches wide, but I'll, I'll starch as much as I need to um, to keep that length of fabric because I don't like seams in my borders or in my sashim. How was my vacation? I'll show some pictures. Did I relax? Absolutely not. Have you ever had a 14 year old girl with a lot of other girls in the room who like to gossip? It's amazing. Let me tell you, you are missing out if you haven't lived that life. Do I starch panels? Yes, I starch everything. Christmas morning, any news on that? Late July. Will you be getting Lori's pink metal cross stitch stand back in stock? No, we're doing a new color, so we will have a new color. Um, I love how you want to redecorate another part of the house to coordinate with the quilt. I can relate. Oh my gosh, I was looking yesterday. I was like, oh, I don't really like my um, bedspread. Maybe I should get like a different one. And maybe I should like do blue. And then I got home and I looked at my room and I was like, what? I have to change all the quilts in here. So maybe not. Um, does Sweetwater do different label sizes? Yes, you get a little package each month. They're all different sizes. Um, your opinion on 50-50 starch vodka water. Um, that would take too much time. So what I use right now is faultless spray starch. What is the name of the glue? Acorn Precision Glue. Will I be at the Houston Quilt Show? No. How did Emma do? Emma did great. Um, all of her dances, she was in nine dances. All of them placed platinum. And at nationals, it's much harder to get a platinum. She did great. Two of her dances got first place. Um, so she did great. Her solo... I think she was like 11th overall. Um, so yeah, so she did great. I'm gonna show pictures in a little bit. So I'm gonna move away from the backing. If you have questions though, I'm happy to answer them. Um, I wanted to show you that this week we came out with our Liberty Box, which you guys have been asking about forever and ever. And I do apologize, it is very late this year and it's late because of what is going on in the world. Um, but I think it'll still be great to have so that you can make it for next year, even though 
Sunday is July 4th, and we wanted to give you a sneak peek. And these are so awesome. So these are labels that you can put in your binding. So I will show you, I'll grab a quilt and kind of show you how you could, how you could place it. So this will match the fabric in your box. You get tons of labels, so you can use this for years and years and years. So for example, if you wanted, pretend, let's pretend this is not Halloween. Let's pretend this is Americana fabric. What you would do is before you put your binding down, you would just place this down and just hand sew it and it will have a cute little tag and I would probably put it in the corner. So I'd probably put it like right here or right here and it's so cute because it says made in the USA. So um, we will sell out of these in a couple of weeks. The box is gonna ship in late July, like I said. Um, this was planned. We were hoping to launch this in April, but um, we weren't able to. And I love this box. Um, the fabric is really awesome in this box. So I think you guys will like it. Um, and then now I'm gonna move to video of the week and we're gonna do a little pop-up. So this is a video that we released in June of 2015. And um, I didn't realize it was that long ago. I'm gonna lay this on the table real quick first. But um, this was a Christmas collection from 2015 by Basic Gray. The collection is called Evergreen. And we released this video in 2015. It comes in crib, lap, twin, and king, I believe. Let's see, yeah, crib, lap, twin, and king. So it's completely free pattern. Actually, no, it's a free block pattern, but if you wanna turn it into a quilt, it's a paid low price PDF. But, so here's the quilt. And if you wanted help with these, you could use H200 triangle paper. And the way that we pieced this was, we pieced this and then added a triangle. There's lots of ways you could piece this. You could piece this as a, you could piece it there and have a half square triangle there. And you could piece it where this is a half square triangle here, and then you have extra. So there's lots of ways you can piece this block. We piece this one where there would be less seams. And I would say this, this quilt, um, I would say maybe intermediate, but if you have the paper, it should be fine. The triangle paper. So I think we'll pull the quilt so you can see all of it. And let's see, it's a beautiful quilt. So this one I believe is the lap and then she has the red binding. This was the backing and this fabric is a grunge that came out with Evergreen. It's 30150-264. So that's that grunge. And that is one of our videos. And then I'm gonna show you next the pillow from the Scrapbook of Quilts Pillow Along. So we have the book. I'm gonna first show you my pillow. So this is the brand new book by Joanna Figueroa and Carrie Nelson, and there are gonna be six pillows. Now I'll give you a little tease. I'm gonna do all six. One of them I'm actually turning into a table runner because it fits the size of one of my tables. So what I did here is I used five straight spool blocks and then five on point, or yeah, and then five on point quilt blocks. So there's two different blocks. Actually, I did all straight blocks. I did nine of the straight spools blocks. Gina Tell quilted it with the little, um, this little design that's super cute. I used a gingham. I did find that on all of these pillows that I'm doing, I ended up using gingham. This is shine on fabric, and there wasn't enough red and blue from shine on, so I did pull about four or five fabrics from my scraps of Bonnie and Camille. And this right here is the white on white polka dot from shine on. It's hard to tell that it's a polka dot, but it is. And then on the back, Gina pieced it together for me, and she did the full envelope back. So it's um, all the way, it's full but then she did a really pretty top stitch here and here, and we'll kind of zoom in, but she did two, two stitches of cross stitch, two stitches of 
two pretty stitches. Let's just say that, two pretty stitches. And then um, she used Aurifil Red thread, so it matches. So that's my pillow. And I have lots to show you from everyone else's pillows. So first is Joanna's pillow. And so Joanna, if you go to her blog, she tells you exactly how to do this pillow. So she's combined part of the book with a different layout. I love the gingham, I love the low volume. I think it's great. And that's more of like an elongated pillow. Now my pillow, so you would wanna follow her on, that's her Instagram, Big Tree and Co. And you can visit her blog for more information on how she made that pillow. She did do some blue cornerstones that make it, um, you know, that's that kind of ties it into be Americana. Um, the pillow that I made, I forgot to say, is 20 inches square. The next one is Susan of the Felted Pear. So she did the same pillow layout I did, except she did five straight and four on point. And both of the blocks that size are in the book. And so her, her pillow is also 20 inches square. And she talks about that background is the medium blue chambray. It is out of stock until September from Moda, but we will have that back in stock. And I love that the my quilt has a white background. Joanna's has a gingham and hers has a blue. So it shows you different ways to do patriotic and different themes. And then I wanna show you the back of her quilt. She puts description on here, but what she did is she used a zipper with a flange and sh that way she can switch out her pillows and I can also switch out mine. I don't know how to do a zipper, so. The next one I love, it's Greg Jones of Gray Dogwood Studios. And he took the smaller block on page 41 of the book, that's a three inch size, and put it, put it um, this way. And it also finishes at 20, 20 inches. And so I love this one. So yeah, and he used, that is fig tree fabric. So um, let me know if there's any questions on the pillows. I wanna give a, Piggy wants to give a thank you to Charmaine Williams for Super Chat. She says, thank you for all your videos. I love Hack Quarter Shop. Well, thank you so much. We love you too. And then Marianne Lucas, Lori Ehrenstoft, she says, so happy. And then Valeria Bauer, thank you so much for your Super Chats. And then um, he, John Keem, said, my family just rec rescued 40-day-old kitten kittens named Bori. He has a fractured leg and broken tail, but now he's in a happy home. His disability is nothing. This is from Bori. Oh, I hope you're a little kitty. Um, yeah, Piggy, Piggy says hi to your kitty. What is the name on the white on white dots? This is just Shine On. I'm not sure if it's still in stock or not, um, but it's just from the Shine On collection. This pattern would be pretty and Holly Holiday. Any word on songbook? Um, I'll put that on the list to follow up with next week. Wondering when Bats and Booze will be starting soon. How much fabric is in the Liberty box? It's a mystery box. So um, you'll have to wait and see. It is a great value for your money though. Chambray, September. What is your favorite fat quarter friendly quilt pattern? I bought the Marion Bright bundle and I'm not sure what to do with it. Well, I'm gonna show you in our book of the month, we have two fat quarter books that are on sale this month that would work for that. Will you be doing the pillows with us? Yes, so this is my first pillow and I there's gonna be six total. So I have the next two done and then the next one I have everything except the borders done and then the next two I haven't even started. The Liberty box ships late July. What is the backing I used? This is from Shine On. <clears throat> Any updates on the June Sew so Sampler? Um, I would, there, it's not shipping yet and we will send all those updates through email. Can anyone tell me what happened to Niagara Starch? They got, okay, so Faultless got bought by Niagara and now everything is Niagara. So Faultless is now gone but it's, the same it's a new company Niagara they still have some stuff called thoughtless some stuff called Niagara but when you go to like a general grocery store it's gonna say most likely Niagara 
Do I have the red gingham in stock? I'm not sure. This is from Shine On. So I'm not sure exactly what's still in stock and what's not. This is actually, everything I'm doing on these pillows is from my stash. So I didn't buy anything to make the pillows except for I needed um, like eight inches for my um, table runner border because since it ended up being a table runner, I needed yardage. So that was the only thing I had to buy. There are several types of faultless spray starch. Does it make a difference? Yes. So um, Lisa Bonjean uses the heavy and I use just the normal, but I'm gonna try the other two this weekend. Any update on Sweetwater Red Barn? We will give an update next week. Will a fat eighth bundle be enough for the bats and booze? I'm not sure. It says, what will the new color be, Kimberly? I wasn't sure what that meant. Oh, the blossom stand. I can't tell you what new color it will be. <laughs> I do know what it will be. Um, so along has already begun. Have you seen the rotary iron? It's a game changer for ironing. We will look that up. We'll look that up later today. I don't know what that is. What is the brand of the iron on ruler? It is Clover Hot Hemmer. There is a ruler and there is also, they have something called a hot hemmer. And the hot hemmer is is square instead of rectangle, they both work. Are you doing the Macaroon Mystery SAL? No. Um, any of these that come through that are asking about yardage or when things are shipping, we're just gonna write them in a note and give you an update next week instead of reading all of them. Um, just got my 2021 Designer Mystery, can I starch? Yes. The pillow along has already begun. How do you clean quilts? Um, there's lots of different ways. I actually, if I wash my quilts, which there's a couple in my house I wash, most I use for decoration, I will wash on cold and I will hand, I have like a, like where coats go and I, and there's like a tile floor, I will put that over the little rod and let it dry. Don't ever put it in the iron. I raised two girls, I know what you mean. I don't know, like I just need to get through this. I, um, I can usually like handle most things, but some things came out of her mouth and I was like, oh Lord, heaven, Jesus, please help me get through the day. <laughs> like, and one of the, yeah, it was, um, I'm glad that she feels free enough to talk about the world in front of me, um, but it's difficult. Does the finishing cup kit come in a box like last year from Designer Mystery? Yes. Do I starch making? No. Do I starch backing? Yes. Will I sell simple whatnots from Kim Deal next year? Yes, I always offer her club. It's not aerosol, then why can't it ship internationally? That is, okay, so anything starch, that is um, USPS rules. So whatever USP rules are, that's what we do. That's what we go by, and also it could be that it costs too much to ship. Do you put a layer of fabric on the back of your pillow front? It would be inside, yes. So, I'll take out this pillow and show you. What I do, so we I got this pillow. This is just a generic pillow that I, oops, I bought it from Fat Quarter Shop. I'm not gonna take the whole thing out. So on the back right here, I sent 9900 color 200, I sent a square that's like 24 inches square for all my pillows so that when she quilts it first, it goes with that white, but I provided that to the quilter. And I, I'm doing that with all of them. So yeah. And I, um, one of Kevin's pet peeves in the house, he doesn't have very many, but one of them is pillows. He doesn't like a lot of pillows because we don't really have anywhere to store them because we don't have, like we have this big closet, but it needs like storage, but both of us are too like, we're not great at that, so the, we just kind of throw the pillows wherever and they stack and they're a mess. And he was like, can you stop buying pillows? Like, we don't need any more pillows. And I was thinking, oh, I'm about to make five more. But what I should do is just get one 20 inch pillow and switch it out each time. But I buy individual pillows because then I'm afraid I won't find the pillow. But at the end of the year, I am gonna kind of organize my stuff by season so that, that I'll actually know where stuff is. Do I starch charm packs? I starch everything I sew with, but if you need the full charm pack, you would have to start with a bigger fabric because it is going to shrink. 
will I do an advent calendar box for cross stitch or quilting? It is kind of on a list, but I'm not really sure. It definitely not gonna be on a list soon due to deliveries. Um, so, you know, it's like a maybe thing. Is there going to be a tutorial on designer mystery? No. Could you use Chelsea's checks for the gingham? Absolutely. What are the names of the new starches? I'll show you in a little bit. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on and show you kind of all the stuff that I sew besides this. And next week I will show you my pillow that, um, and big thanks to Gina Tell. She is, luckily, she's quilting them, piecing them, and she's doing the binding for me. So she's putting the whole pillow together or else I wouldn't be able to get this done. But I'm gonna move to the new Sew Along by Susan Aki. It is a book called Sampler Spree. It is produced by Barton Gill. So I'm gonna show you the book real quick. So here's the book. Now this would be from a more advanced quilter because in it are cut sizes but no assembly. Now on Moda Fabrics blog where that is where they are hosting the sew along, there's this page where it tells you the color, you fill in what you make. And um, Katie is so nice, she fills this out for me with all my notes. So if you receive a thank you note from me in the mail and the, the handwriting doesn't match, it's because I didn't do this. Um, I just don't want you guys to think that I'm not writing the thank you notes, but this is, um, Katie does these for me. So this is a way that you could write out each week what you're going to do, and then as you're done, maybe check off. You know, you could put, yes, you're completed. So if you do all but one, when you go back to this page, you could say, oh, I still need to do that one. So I got all of my blocks done for this week. I haven't started next week yet. Next week, she will tell you the color on Tuesday. I'm gonna show you each of my blocks and kind of talk through what I did. I was able to make these Friday and Saturday, so it took me about eight hours to do all 12 of these blocks. This one, um, what I did is I used the square and square paper, except when you do it, you have to cover the full paper because you're not putting a point here. So I just covered my full paper and did three corners. You just have to cut your your center square bigger. And I'm pressing all of mine open and I am using the Stitch Collection by Lori Holt that is gonna ship next month. So that's my first one. This one was pretty easy. So when I started, I just did a four inch square to start. I actually cut them and started and I was like, oh, I don't have enough fabric over here. So I made that mistake. So that's the first one. And this week's color is blue. The next one was pretty easy. It's called London Stairs, it's block 20. And what I did is I just made one super long strip of these two fabrics. I cut it half inch bigger, cut all, sewed it, trimmed it down on both sides and then trimmed it into squares and pieced it. So that's pretty easy. I love when we get like easy blocks. This one was a, pretty hard. This is Dream Ship. And this one I used H150 for the flying geese. And I, um, when I, I will tell you a little trick I did is when I pieced this and I added these two, I made these two wider out of the bottom and then trimmed down. And I did, I've been using that glue that I've been showing you, that acorn precision glue for my corner squares like here. So that's the thing you could do is make this bigger. And again, I'm pressing all of this open. It does take longer, but my blocks are coming out much more accurate. The next block was the hardest and it drove me crazy. It's called Lightning Strikes. It's number 31. And I'm gonna do a little pop-up to show you my mistake. So my idea was to cut all 12 of these on Friday night and then start assembling Saturday. So I got it all done and then I was laying it out and I had an egg. So you have to make four that go one direction and then four units that go the other direction. But I made five that go one direction and three that go another. So I had an extra one that didn't work. So I had to fix it, but that's kind of funny. That's called late at night, I guess. <clears throat> and then with the blues, I kind of threw in some greens also or you know turquoise kind of you know not exactly true blue this one is called double shoe fly it's number 35 
And on this one, I used H250 to make the half square triangles. And then I added this with corner squares. And then to make these two, I did a whole strip. So I pieced this and this enough to make four and then subcut to save time. The next one, oh my gosh, this is my favorite block. I'm so excited about it. I love this block. I thought I was gonna hate it because I've never made a block like this. So this is block 49, it's called Opposites. And when I got to the book, I thought, I am not gonna have any idea how to do this. And when the Sew Along started on Moda's blog, Susan Aki said to get the Companion Angle Ruler and a couple of other rulers. So I went ahead and bought this and had it. This was awesome. It was so easy to make. It has, um, what I did do though is when I put everything together, I used a ton of pins because all of this is bias here and here. So I used lots and lots of pins. And um, this was, I just love this block. I wanna do something, like I wanna do a quilt or something with this because I was, you know, sometimes when you're quilting, it's fun to do stuff you've never done before. And um, it was so much easier than I thought. I was so worried about it. I thought I was gonna have to draw templates, but it was a really, really nice surprise. So I'm happy that I had the ruler. There are templates in the book though, if you need it. This block is called Jack in the Box. It's number 67. This block is just funky. I don't really like it. I feel like there's a mistake in it or something. I'm not really sure I did it right. Um, so I don't know, it's kind of funky. I did make sure these all went the same direction though. But that block, I don't know, I feel like maybe, maybe there's a mistake in it. I'll have to look. And here, I didn't use any funny paper or anything. I just used the precision glue. This is block 71, and I really like this one. I like how the colors came out. It's called Oh Susanna. Um, same thing, I used the corner square to do these, and then I strip set these, except when you do that, you have to be careful because I wanted, you have to do two strip sets with one direction and two strip sets the other to make it work so all of your fabrics go the same direction if you're OCD like me. Um, but I, I, I did like this one. I think it's very pretty. I love aqua, so. This one, I'm not really sure I did the fabrics the way that Lori told me to, but I think I did because Lori Holt is the one that's helping me pick the fabric. So this is block 82. It's called Scotch. We're trying to get this background um, thrown in where we can. So I'm not sure here if I was supposed to put this fabric or this fabric, but I did it. It looks fine. Nobody will notice. Um, and I didn't do anything funny here. I just pieced it like I normally would. This is Hayes Corner, and I don't like this block. Um, it's just too strong. Like, I feel like it's just got too much going on. But what I did here is I chain piece to get these. I used H200 for this, and then I just added these. But this has got a lot going on. I think it'll look really good in the quilt, though, in the end. Now, this is one of my favorite blocks. This is called Broken Windows, but this block took me over an hour. So these are H100s, and then this, I did both of these flying geese using the small flying geese ruler by quilt in a day, but then you have to trim it down. So this took a lot of time, but I love the look of it. I love how it came out really nice and square. It just took a lot of, it took a lot of fabric, so I had to stop and starch actually, actually on that one. And then this one's kind of fun. This one, I did the hourglasses where I cut them bigger and trimmed down, and then I fussy cut the little flower. But I like this one because it's got lots of color. So even though Susan Aki is doing it by color, you can have fun and add other colors. So I'm gonna kind of lay them all out just so you can see this week. So I have got week, this is week three, I think. Yeah, week three. So tonight I gotta start working on week four. These take quite a bit of time. So let's see. We'll kind of stack them a little bit. So you can see I've got green, blue. Now, she's gonna have some colors in the sew along that I don't have. And that's okay, because I'm gonna just 
do whatever I want. We're just going to make extra of other colors. Let's see. So always when you're doing a sew along, make it your own. You can break the rules a little bit. So these look, I'm really happy with these. Of course, I love aqua. So anytime that I was picking the fabric with Lori, she would say, which one, aqua or green? And I would say aqua. So um, let's see, I used this fabric twice. I used this fabric twice and these two are different. So I was able to use a lot of different colors. Like I used this one twice. So that's a lot of fun. I think the bottom white white triangle is turned wrong. Yeah, something here is wrong. Let me peek in the book. But for sure something is wrong. But I don't want to redo it. Let's see. Jack in the Box is number what? Let's see. See what block that number is. Let's see. 67. Let me look. So I'm going to look in the book. Okay. I'm going to actually move all this so I can see. This is what's great about having the live stream is um, I can catch my mistakes <laughs> um, before they're in a quilt. Let's see. Yeah, this one's wrong. And this one's wrong. So this whole thing needs to be pulled off and flipped. But at least, hey, it's, it's right there. So I just need to unstitch that and flip it around. So I'll fix that tonight and bring it tomorrow. Not tomorrow. I'm not going to work tomorrow. Okay. So let's see. I signed up for the 2021 Designer Mystery. Just received block one and backing. Where do I find the patterns for the blocks? The pattern comes in your block. It comes with your fabric. Why not let the quilter add the label? You could. You can do whatever you want. Um, I, I like to do it. It's fun. I don't see a label on your pillow. No, I'm not putting labels on my pillow. That's that's too much. So then I'm gonna move to, let's see, American Quilter Stitch Along, which is by Lisa Bonjean, and it is a completely free sew along. So we'll go to the top camera real quick. And if you go to Primitive Gatherings, she has a YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is called Lisa Bonjean. Her blog is Primitive Gatherings, and she is giving you 20 free blocks that you can put in a setting that is in this book. So if you want to do the same setting, you would buy the book, but the blocks are free. So I'm going to show you block four and kind of talk through what I did on this one. So this one, I, and what I am trying to do, I am using the Primitive Gatherings Fat Quarter Bundle, but what I'm trying to do is I am trying to use the same fabric she's using. And I like that because I don't have to think and it takes a lot of the work out because all I have to do is piece my block. I don't have to think about the fabric, so that's great. And here, I did pay attention to the direction of the stripes and she didn't. Actually, she did, she made it a circle. And I think hers looks better than mine because mine's kind of, it's kind of obvious that they don't line up. But what I did do that's different and um, she did her flying geese where you take squares cut them on the diagonal twice, and piece. Now this is a no waste method, so you won't waste any fabric. What I did though, is I used our flying geese paper, ISE774, and I pieced mine that way. And when I did that, I did have to pay attention to the direction of the stripes. So that's block four, and then I'm gonna show you my previous blocks. And I haven't decided what background I'm going to use. The background she's suggesting will be in stock later in the summer, but this is a 16 week sew along. So you have plenty of time to get your fabric. And she gives free video tutorials in addition to the pattern. And then I'm gonna move and show you Lori's red sampler. So I'm gonna first pop up all of her blocks that she did. So these are her four blocks. Now, she's gonna have a video today, so I would encourage you to subscribe to Lori Holt's YouTube channel because I'm gonna have to watch it today because she's gonna talk a lot about the sew along today in her video, and she's gonna have information that I'm gonna need. But now, since we've made a lot of six inch blocks this week and next week, 
she is going to be showing four 12 inch blocks because we need more 12 inch blocks for the finishing she's doing. So those are her four blocks and then we're gonna go block by block. So let's see her block one. So her block one is from Vintage Christmas and so she used nine different fabrics. So I did the same thing and what I did, I used different fabrics because I'm low. I did use the same background. This block is from the Vintage Christmas book and one thing that I did different, I did piece my hourglass different. So she shows how you make half square triangles, put them together, and you get hourglass. What I did is I cut squares five and a half inches, cut them on the diagonal twice, didn't use two of the fabrics, only used, only used half, and then I used my Creative Grid CGR4 to trim them down. And let's see, I was a little bit, so I made sure these kind of went the same way. I am running out of fabric though. And I tried to put these on different corners because they're similar. And on this one, I did press my hourglass open, but when I got to putting the rows together, I did press to one side. So that's my first block. And then her second block is called Mama's Applique. And so you're gonna see that I used the same sashing, but the rest of oh, the same gingham. So here's my block and Farm Girl Vintage 2. So I used this fabric that she used, but I did use two different fabrics here because I'm running out of red fabrics. And my goal is when I do these stitch alongs is to use what I have. It's Lori's motto, make do with what you have. Make do or do without, I think is her motto. But I am trying to use all of my fabric. And I did all of these when I got home from vacation. So it is definitely doable. Um, and let's see, oh, I have a little pop-up here. So I did do, when I was doing this one, I made the white part where you add the two borders. So when you look here, right here, you add borders to a square. I, if you look at my picture, Mine is wider outside here. So I made it a tiny bit bigger, like an eighth of an inch, quarter inch bigger. When I added the corner square like that, I just added it to the corner. And then the next picture shows that I trimmed it down with my ruler, Creative Grids ruler. So that's a way that you can get an accurate block by cheating. So here's my block again. So that's just, you know, like I do little shortcuts like that. The next block that she has is the 12 inch wool star block by Vintage Christmas. And this one, let's see, I did, to I did copy some of her fabrics, let's see. Okay, so here's my block. I use this fabric because I have a lot of it because Lori was so nice. Lori mailed me some of her red fabric that I didn't have. And I did use the same gingham that she used and then I just used a dot and I used the same text. And for this little thing right here, I used H275. And on this one, let's see, I just pressed according to the book. I didn't do anything funny. I don't know why I pressed this open right here. I wasn't supposed to, I guess I had fun. But I did in general press according to the book, but I can tell you in the book, it does not tell you to press open there. So who knows what I was doing? That's so funny. And then the last block that she has is called Cool Threads. And I am running out of that fabric because I'm using that collection in the Susan Aki sew along and that fabric doesn't come out till June. So I've only got what I've got. So I did similar. She sent me this gingham, which I didn't have. It's an older fabric called Calico Days, super old. And I haven't used it in any of my blocks because I didn't have any. So she mailed me some, and that's what's great about having friends in the quilting industry. You can share your fabric. So I went ahead and used this because she's used that in a lot of other blocks and it looks great and I haven't used it. I did use different, different ones. And then I'll show all four of them real quick together. And this one is just from the first Farm Girl Vintage book. So I, it took me two different nights to do these so it's definitely doable because I didn't I didn't I didn't get to them before I went out of town so I am running out of background 
So I did have to buy some of the backgrounds that we do have in stock. And then this is, I think, oh, this is Blossom. It's the red on white, and this is actually on sale this month. And I had to buy more of this, um, and she's not using it. Do I still have the background? So I have this one in stock. These are from her B backgrounds, and this one is, I think, out of stock. This one is in stock, it's Blossom. A lot of her fabrics are out of stock until September, but I have everything on order, and I have tons and tons of it on order, so when it comes in, we will have plenty. Are some of your blocks in Lori's red quilt not Lori's fabric? I believe all of them are. I don't think there's anything in here that's not Lori's except this blossom. This is a Christopher Thompson fabric. But all of these are, this is like a really old fabric. So I do try to keep it just Lori's. Um, and the backgrounds, kind of what I'm doing is, I'm gonna have to space out the backgrounds within the placement of the quilt because I've been using some of the backgrounds more than others because we have run out of some of them. How many weeks is her red sampler quilt along? So she's gonna talk about that today in her video, but it does end at the end of July. So we are at the beginning of June, so two more months. Do I cut my fabric to match pattern design or grain of fabric? I cut it for pattern. I don't even know anything about grain of fabric. So definitely not grain of fabric. Is there a way to add a label that has already been quilted? You could do it on top just like that and try to hand stitch it down. It might be tough if your quilting is tight, but um, you could do that. The Blossom is by Christopher Thompson and it is amazing. Oh yes, it is amazing. Okay, so um, I wanna, Piggy wants to say thank you to Vicki Coleman Novak for a super chat. And I still have a couple more sew alongs that I'm doing. So the first one, the next one I'm gonna show you is called Quilting Life. And this one is free. So this one is by Sherry McConnell. And she has a blog, A Quilting Life. And she also released a video this week on this blog. In this series, cause she does do a free block of the month every year. This year she did two sizes, six inch and 12 inch. If you look at her channel, she is doing both sizes in two different collections. What I decided to do this year is to use the flea market collection with this background and I wanted this brown to be an accent throughout. So um, I'm using the Lori Holt flea market collection. And what I do when I'm making any of these is I keep a stack of fabrics I've used and a stack of fabrics I haven't used so that I try to use all my fabrics at least once. So I didn't have any more reds that I hadn't used yet because I've already used all the reds. So I got creative. And in this collection, Lori has a panel. Lots of, actually she has several panels. So I found this red in the center. I literally cut it out, cut it on the diagonal, made these and trimmed them down. So you can get creative. If you need an extra aqua and you just need a little piece, you can get creative with panels. So this is a way that I was able to pull a red from her panel and put it here. So don't ever be afraid to um, do that. And that was a lot of fun. And then I just cut this out just to show you. That's what I did is I just cut it out and then I just cut on the diagonal, added the background and then trimmed down because it's kind of hard to use triangle paper when you've got kind of this yellow going. But if you need any, you know, red that's tiny, you can pull these. So always, you know, don't always kind of think outside the box on all the things that you do. The next one that I sewed along with is called Bright Side. <clears throat> this comes with the sew sampler box. Now, if if you don't subscribe to the Sew Sampler Box, they're also available separately. So this is block one. I am doing mine in the Christmas Morning Fabric Collection by Layla Boutique coming out in July. It's delayed two months. And this is the Bright Side Collection by Sherry and Chelsea. And Sherry designed these blocks. So I want to show you block one again. So this is my block. And this is uh, Teresa's block. And Teresa made the blocks um, for the samples. 
and then block two came out with this month's box and this one I will tell you was the hardest for me to pick fabric but I'm really proud of how it came out um, I did intentionally do these this way and then this the other way because it got too matchy matchy when all the stripes went the same way and then this is Teresa's block and this is the fabric that it was written for so that's fun now I'm gonna show you some different things for this we provided a free little download on our blog for this little sheet and you put this in your binder we have a link to Amazon but basically we bought the binder at Amazon and we bought these little plastic sheets to put in here for you to slip it in to keep yourself organized and there are going to be some different options so I wanted to show you we did do a thread set and we do the thread set for anybody who wants to maybe have some colors that match you know if you want to sew like do some top stitching or you want to use the thread for your binding or anything fun we always do these little thread sets that are super popular so we did do a thread set this year it's called the bright side thread set and if you you know sew with these colors you could get the thread set you don't have to use the other now what I'm going to do with my blocks is I'm going to set them in this setting which is a strawberry picking pattern that we published a couple years ago it's designed by Jocelyn but I'm gonna set my blocks within regular sashing and do this because I don't need a lot of big quilts the quilt that Sherry designed is much bigger so this one the one that I'm gonna make is 51 by 66 and then the finishing one this one's going to be a little bit bigger it's going to be 54 by 72 hold on let me look real quick the blocks are what size let me see okay nine inch okay yeah so yeah mine's going to be 51 by 66 and then this one's 54 by 74 but I wanted to show you we do have these quilts kits now the quilt the reason I'm showing you is these always sell out but this is the bright side quilt along kit and what it does is it has all the fabric for the quilt top and the binding and what Sherry did and if you want a sneak peek at it go to Kimberly Stitch Squad on Facebook and someone has made the block from this and you can see the design so if you're wanting you know to cheat and see what it looks like before you buy it someone has made it and um, I wanted to show that because these do always sell out and then the na the last one that I kind of sewed along with this week is the shine on block of the month and um, I already made this like six or seven months ago or nine months ago or a year ago I already made it so this is a block of the month from us and Bonnie and Camille it's called the Bonnie and Camille quilt bee and I'm gonna pop up all the images that Camille did where she sewed along on um, Instagram so these are all the blocks for this week so there's four different blocks and I just wanted to show you that Okay, now I'm gonna answer questions and then we'll move on to another thing. Let's see, for the sampler quilt, do you try to mix backgrounds or use the same one? So I tried to use the same one throughout except we're mixing that text in. But within the red sampler, I'm mixing backgrounds. So it just depends on what quilt it is. Um, I do different things for each quilt and it kind of depends on what I have in my stash already. And um, what I don't have because when I do sew alongs I don't want to have to buy a big purchase that's not the point of sew along sew alongs is to use your stash or you know what I mean so when you get a stitch witchery on your iron how do you get the goo off I use this stuff that we have right here thanks this stuff right here it's called Duritz iron off hot iron cleaner and you just have to be careful with it it kind of stinks so you don't want to use too much in your room but you just kind of put it on there when the iron is not hot rub it off another thing you can do is um, that a lot of people taught me 
years and years ago is you can use wax paper. I don't know who has wax paper in their house anymore, but you know when you used to cook and not eat Chick-fil-A every night for dinner, um, there was like wax paper in your kitchen, you can rub wax paper on your iron to get stuff off. Is there a backing for bright side? It's sold out. So again, that's what I'm saying is stuff has been selling out. Is there a book that have all of your foundation papers? No, but going forward, all of our books and patterns, we're listing um, triangles on a roll sizes. Would I consider making a quilt with all the papers on the roll? You are the best. Well, I would, except I think we get a lot of complaints because people would say that's too many papers to buy. If I could buy one book, which would you suggest? I have Spelling Bee, which I love. I would buy Farm Girl Vintage. Are you going to be at the Garden of Quilts? Depends on my daughter's dance schedule. Do we get the bolt discount with the basic of the month sale? No, because that would be double dipping. So now I'm gonna show you our sale of the month and it is Christopher Thompson, which we already talked about, and this is Blossom. And so we do have a white Blossom bundle, a colorful Blossom bundle, which has those, and then Vivid Blossom. So these are on sale 20% off for the month. Now, I will tell you that these do sell out. The bundles sell out first. So the yardage and the bundles are on sale for the month of July. Now, Coriander Quilts, she is our pattern designer. And her paper patterns and PDF patterns are on sale, 30% off for this month. Kimberbell Notions. They're on sale 30% off, and then these two books are 30% off. So these are Simply Fat Quarters and Fat Quarter Style, which are first two Fat Quarter books that came out. So these are great. So everyone who was asking about Fat Quarter patterns, this is what I would suggest. And then, um, does the new designer mystery patterns refer to half square triangles on the roll? I don't think those do, but going forward, they are going to. Anything we publish going forward, Basically, if you go backwards, all those patterns were written a year ago or more than a year ago. So going forward to, so going forward, so I would say in six months, everything should be kind of caught up. Now, each week you guys ask me questions on fabric delivery. So I'm gonna go through all of them from last week and give you updates. Solar Flare Quilt Kit by Tula Pink, we are offering and you can pre-order. Koala Me Crazy by Dear Stella, late July. Midnight Magic 2 by April Rosenthal for Moda, late July. Autumn Woodland Quilt Kit, mid to late July. We're cutting that, and when we cut that, what we're doing is we're cutting it by section. So we're cutting it as if you're sewing it as a block of the month. So it takes us longer to package because we're putting inserts in each. Cranberries and Cream, Fat Quarter Bundle, early August. Happy Days, Fat Quarter Bundle, available now. Urban Farmhouse Gatherings 2, late July. Triangles on a roll, small sizes. So, there was a lady who actually requested this. So we put it together. So she wanted the smaller sizes. So we put the half inch finished, one inch finished, one and a quarter, one and a half, one and three quarter, and two inch. So if you're making lots of small blocks, we put together this set so you get all of them. And thank you to Denise for doing that. So thanks to that suggestion, we got that done. And then Acorn Precision Glue, late July. And that one is due, that one is late because um, supply delivery. Um, I read it on their blog or Instagram or somewhere. Um, we do always do like a little throwback where we're taking stuff from my house or from here, from, you know, things we did in the past. So I've talked about this book before. So this book, all of these people in here or somebody in my life. So this one is Peyton. Peyton's awesome. You're gonna see him in an upcoming video. And this this is the quilt that we did and named after him. And this was a Robert Kaufman collection. This book was published, oh, whoa, 2015. So it's six years old, but it's one of my favorite books. Peyton's probably gonna watch this video and say, where is, um, where's my quilt? Can you bring it home? Okay, and then I'm gonna show you some pictures of Emma from this weekend since I showed my boys last weekend. And then I'll show you what's new. So this was from about two weeks ago. So they have a banquet 
at the end of the year and all the students vote on one dancer from the team. So she was, I guess, selected dance. She's pre-senior, so she was the dancer from pre-senior. So that was the only picture she would let me take of her. It is in the back, back seat of my car. Her friend took it. That was the only picture she would let me get. So that was pretty awesome. And then the next photo is, that is at the convention center. That's, that's behind where they dance. So you can't see the audience. So um, that was one of their dances. She's on the very left in that navy blue. And then the next photo is we were at a hotel that had um, roller coasters and an arcade. And these girls bought these shirts. And I was like, those are the most horrible shirts I've ever seen in my entire life. And they loved them because the 80s is coming back. And so I told her that I don't really want to go anywhere in public if she wears that. So she's, um, she thinks that's funny. And that's her on the right. Her best friend is the one on the right next to her. And the other two girls, they used to go to school with her at a different school, so we've known them a long time. And then the last photo, let's see. That is, I, I had like had enough at the hotel. So some of the girls spent the night with me and I was like, we're going to eat at a real restaurant. So we went to Salt, Salt Lick, which is super awesome because they have amazing food. And I felt like they needed to actually eat and have protein because at the hotel they were kind of getting you know how sometimes you're like at a hotel and they get skimpy meals and i was like you girls are about to dance for like eight dances in uh like six hours so i made them eat like a full meal so that was kind of fun so then now i'll show kind of the what's new section um these are like all new things so you can see that lots of stuff is coming in now so a lot of things that were delayed from april and may and June, they're coming in because it's July. So we're gonna have a lot of new stuff. And each week what I do is I go through the What's New page and I pick what I like. So this, I love this, it's called Monkey Biz. It is by Quilting Treasures and it's little sock monkeys and I love it. And if my kids were little, I would make them something. So I'm just like, I guess, sad. My kids are all big. They're all big now, they don't care. And then we did get the very last, I've been showing all the holiday essentials. We got the last one in, which is the Americana, and we got the pre-cuts and the yardage. We got Happy Days, which so many of you were asking about, and this is what is used in the bright side that I just showed. That is going to be our little insert cards and sew sampler through April 2021 through March 2022, this collection, Sherry and Chelsea. And this, Okay, a lot of people are asking about Dance in Paris because there is a paid pattern that Zen Chic is featuring as a sew along. She did it earlier in the year, but she's redoing it now since the fabric was so delayed. So there's a pattern and she's using this fabric. So I wanted to show it to you um, just because she's doing that sew along and so the yard, everything is here now. And if you want more information, just go to Zen Chic and she's got a blog. It's a great, um, she's got a great, great stuff on her blog. And that's heavy. And then this is the brand new Boudoir by Basic Gray. So if you're like a black, white, gray, there's this one. And then this might be my favorite collection of the whole year. So I took the two quilts that I showed you last week and I showed all four of my kids and I was like, who would like these? And they just kind of looked at me like, what? I don't think they like really, they kind of were like, we have enough quilts. So Peyton took one and then they didn't they didn't want to fight over the other one they were they were like yeah whatever mom but this one i wanted to show you because this is a prepackaged moda kit and all of this is pieced so that's beginner because it's nine patches it's a little bit intermediate because of on point now i have a rule in the house at kimberly's house it's called there is no on point so i will do anything i have to do to not do on point i hate on point but still i love this quilt because this is a panel that you put down so it's got all the pre-cut fabric and then you cut you cut the panel out and you applique it to the top so I think it's amazing and I just love this fabric oh my gosh my whole house is gonna be this next year and then also with this fabric from this collection in each of our jolly bars, which are five by 10 inch rectangles, we put a free pattern 
And then here is the quilt that is our Jolly Bar pattern. And let's see, it is designed by Angel. Nova made this one and Mike from mylongarm.com quilted it. And let's see, so it's kind of like four blocks that are repeated right here. They're repeated right here. And then the creation of the four blocks is gonna create this in the center. So we do a lot and we do, you'll notice that a lot of our Jolly Bars use half square triangles. And the reason why is because there's no waste and we can get the most use out of it and give you the biggest quilt because a lot of you want bigger quilts. So that's why we use, that's why all of our, basically all of our designs use half square triangles because there's no waste. Because if you did a corner square, you're gonna waste. So we do a lot of half square triangles. And I love the quilting on this. It's little pumpkins, it's cute. And then, oh, and I'll show you the back. Doo, doo, doo. Um, we got these cute little tins in and I wanted to show them to you. These are like so cute. So these actually go with a collection that Moda is gonna be showing to stores later in July, but they sent these early and they're so cute. So I just wanna show them to you because they're cute and they're pink. And then everyone has been asking about the starch. So here's the two starches. They call it crafting spray, Qu quilting and crafting spray. So there's this one that is non-aerosol and this one that is aerosol. So I'm gonna try both. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna start one of my collections with this and one of my collections with this. Now I bought two of each because I don't know that I don't know how long they will last and I do drench my fabric in it. It is made by Faultless, which is also Niagara. So I'm not sure how it's gonna be, I don't know. Um, it says fragrance and flake free. Reduces stretch for point matching, improves accuracy for cutting. So these are the two starches. They came in on Monday and I just got back from out of town and I'm gonna try them out. I'm excited to have a different option. And I might like them, I might not, I don't know. Does that take just one Jolly Bar? I think so, but we'll look. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, one Jolly Bar. I can tell by the price. Uh, is the piece backing included in the fabric requirements for Serendipity? It is, when we did Serendipity, we listed fabric requirements for the front, fabric requirements for the back. Is it too late to join the monthly kit that started in April? So you can buy, if you search bright side, you, could, you can't buy the box anymore for May or April, but you can buy block one and block two. And then if you join Sew Sampler, which I think has openings, you, um, you will get three through 12 in those. Is best press, is this starch similar to best press? I have no idea, I haven't tried it, no idea. Would you have enough fabric using triangles on a roll jolly bars for the pattern included? I don't know. Each pattern is different, so it does depend. What kind of pillow form do you use on your pillow of the month? I just bought, I literally went on fatquittershop.com and did 20 inch pillow form and bought whatever one I had. So I don't even know what brand it is. Um, I wanna let you know that on Monday at 9 a.m. I am going to be doing doing a demo on our Make-A-Wish quilt that is behind me, and I'm gonna be showing how to cut the sashing and the borders length of fabric. So if you want any tips on working with length of fabric, whether you're doing it in this quilt or not, I will give you my tips. Um, I do prefer length of fabric, but it can be harder for beginners. So I'm gonna be doing that Monday, so I hope you can join me on Monday. And I wanna say thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part of our community. Um, we love all of you guys. And I wanna give a thank you to all of our new channel members, which are Sharon Rochekel, Victoria Smith, Tracy Mingle, Barbara Grimes, Parker Bug, and Sammy Jared. I hope all of you guys have a wonderful July 4th and I will see you on Monday. So have a great weekend.